welcome to the Football Philosophy Channel. Uh, great win for United last night, 4-1 at home against Basaksa here. The, the points were absolutely, absolutely vital last night. We needed to get to nine points uh, to give ourselves a great chance of getting through. We've now, we now have got a fantastic chance. It's well within our own hands. Um, great win, 4-1. He made, he, he just made the two changes. I was pleased he only made the two changes. I was a bit concerned that he didn't go with two of the uh, two of the three holding midfield players that I usually like to see him play that has worked well for us uh, so often. Uh, but he did he more than got away with it. Obviously, they, they, you know, they smashed them four one in the end. Uh, but Saxe did have plenty of their own chances though throughout the game as well. They had chances both in the first half hour and numerous chances to get maybe a second goal back uh, after it was three one. I remember him hitting the bar after it was three one. I don't think we'll get away with it on a regular basis in the Premier League playing with only one of them. It was Fred who got the job last night of a uh, of the holding midfield role. Although uh, Van der Beek. Uh, did play next to him and did get through his defensive duties, but he's still more of an attacking player and he did play brilliantly going forward. His passing, his one and two touch passing last night from Van der Beek uh, was superb. The um, the t the team, the changes, there were only two changes in the team, as I say. Cavani came in at number nine, uh, which meant Marshall switched to the left and Rashford switched to the right. Uh, so one matter dropped out, so Cavani was in for one matter. And, and Van der Beek came in in place of Matic. That's the, just just the two changes since the West Brom game. There was really, a lot of people thought Two and Zabi was going to play. Uh, Lindelof did play, but then he had to come off at half time. Lindelof as well. So it does appear as though as though his back isn't perfect. So I hope he can sort that out soon. Uh, but it was a brilliant win. Uh, fantastic first goal by Bruno. An absolute cracker uh, from from an outswinging corner by Telles that was flicked on at the near post. Something that I mentioned on um, on my player in focus. If anybody saw player in focus, I mentioned the fact that Telles took three three um, really good uh, corner kicks um, against West Brom, uh, and I even said if you if you look at it on 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 player in focus, I even said that the the one against West Brom, which was his third corner, actually a defender couldn't quite reach it at the front post and touched it on and I said on another day it'll lead to confusion it leads to pandemonium sometimes in the penalty area and it's exactly what happened last night the defender again couldn't quite reach it but managed to get a touch on it and it flicked to the edge of the box where Bruno Bruno strode onto it and absolutely smashed it in like a rocket from the edge of the box uh, I, I noticed Paul Scholes after the match saying how much he used to love being in that position and hoping that nobody had come out and mark him that's exactly what happened to Bruno. Uh, he just took a couple of strides forward and smashed it into the roof of the net. It was a, it was a great goal. Uh, and then the, the second goal was uh, Bruno again. Bruno got Bruno got two. Uh, Marcus Rashford and Dan James were the scorers. Uh, the second goal, uh, across from the left by Tellez. Uh, the keeper dropped it. What the keeper was doing, I really don't know. It was it was, it was an awful blunder by the goalkeeper. Uh, he came to catch it. Uh, sometimes a keeper catches it, but it drops in front of him, and you can dive on it or drop your body, or drop on top of it. But he seemed to catch it for a moment, but then it, somehow it went behind him, and Bruno just had an empty net to tap into from six yards. Uh, but Tellez, uh, he, I don't think he'll get an assist for e for either of the first two goals because the defender touched it to Bruno, and then the keeper dropped it to Bruno. But uh, Tellez will be well pleased with his uh, with his start in the United shirt. Uh, it played. Um, it played well at the weekend. If you saw my player in focus, I actually gave him a seven out of ten. I've been originally given him a six out of ten. You see a lot more when you actually watch watch the player and concentrate on that player rather than watching the whole game. And he played better against West Brom than I actually gave him credit for in the first instance. And then last night, as I say, I don't think he'll get an assist for either of the first two goals. But it was. Uh, they were both from, from his two crosses, the first two goals. So, great start by Tellez. Uh, the third goal was a penalty. Uh, a long ball by Lindelof. Rashford chased it through and uh, he, he, he got really close to the dead ball. And the angle was the, the angle for him was really narrow. I don't really think he was going to score it. When he, when he ran clear, it looked like it might be a chance. But it uh, had gone really narrow and I don't think he was going to score. But the defender ran in, it ran into him from behind and bundled him over. He didn't need to do it. But we got a penalty. 
which I thought Bruno would take. Obviously, Bruno is the penalty taker, and he was he was on uh, he was on two already. So it, it was a, a hat trick chance for Bruno. I was amazed that he gave the ball uh, to Marcus for Marcus to take it. Um, I remember this sort of thing happening twice before in recent months. Um, once towards the end of last season after lockdown. Um, Marcus hadn't scored for a while and Bruno gave him the ball and everybody thought it was a confidence booster at the time to get Marcus on the score sheet. Uh, and it did actually work. He scored a goal or two in pretty, pretty quick succession, having taken that penalty and scored it. Uh, that was last season. And then earlier this season against Leipzig, Anthony Marshall hadn't scored yet. And this is a, it's a great way of thinking for the, for the players to think about the teammates like this. And uh, Marshall took the, goal, uh, took the penalty against Leipzig to get his first goal of the season. Um, what, what I didn't quite understand last night is, is uh, it's certainly in the press, I'm not sure this is happening uh, within, within the United staff, but certainly in the press, this unwarranted for me, unwarranted, unwarranted criticism uh, of Anthony Marshall not scoring enough goals. It'd be great if he scored more goals, of course it would. Uh, but he's playing well enough and he's important to our play, he's important to the hold-up play. He played on the wing yesterday uh, on the left and, and played really well again. I don't think there's any necessity whatsoever to criticise him for his for his lack of goals so far. It, soon to, it can soon swing round that. But what, what I didn't quite grasp is, is Marcus has got seven goals so far, or he had seven goals, he's now got eight, and, and Anthony's only got two so what, quite why uh, he threw the ball to, to it, it doesn't add up compared to when they've done it twice before. The twice before was to give players a goal who sort of needed a goal. So on this occasion, if he was going to give it to somebody else, I would have thought it would have uh, made more sense to give it to, to Anthony Marshall rather than uh, rather than Marcus Rashford. So obviously you now got the situation. Marcus, Marcus took the pen, took it very well. <clears throat> He's now on eight goals in, uh, in in all competitions, and Anthony's on two still. But uh, that, that's what that's what happened. So uh, the fourth goal was a was a was a brilliant goal, really. Overall, it was scored by Dan James from a, a breakaway uh, down the right by Greenwood. I was really pleased for for Dan James uh, getting getting his goal, but I was also pleased for Greenwood getting the assist. And I'll I'll uh, I'll cover that very shortly. But but first of all, the move for the goal was was absolutely brilliant. Um, Matic played a beautiful. Beautifully weighted ball, a first touch ball, a 30 yard pass along the turf, straight into Cavani's feet uh, on the halfway line. Cavani laid it off first touch to Van der Beek. Van der Beek played it first time in, th in front of Greenwood. Greenwood had oceans of room to run into, squared it to Dan James, and Dan James just had the keeper to beat from about 12 yards, I would say. It really was a beautifully worked goal, and it was all all one touch passing apart from the, the, the last pass by Greenwood after he took a he took a touch before before putting it in front of Dan James. So so it was a beautiful goal. And anybody who saw my preview uh, of the game yesterday, there was a few people saying, "What's he talking about?" When I mentioned, I meant th there was a uh, the I think it was the yeah it was it was the Manchester Evening News and the Evening Standard. Uh, thought that United might start with Cavani at number nine, uh, with with Rashford and uh, sorry Rashford and Greenwood on the flanks, um, and I said that I don't think that would suit Cavani really if he was playing with Rashford and and Greenwood and you know a lot of people said you know what what's he talking about well those two players Greenwood normally plays on the right Rashford normally plays on the left and they both like to cut into shoot and neither of them like to really try to get to the dead ball line and get the ball across um which is what Cavani would would like you to do so last night Greenwood got half an hour and in half an hour and, and also Dan James got half an hour by the way in that half hour there is ab there's, there's three absolutely perfect examples of what I'm talking about Greenwood, two minutes after he was on, got the ball on the right-hand touchline, uh, beat a man brilliantly and ran towards the penalty area. And he's running towards the penalty area and he's not really looking across the box to see if there's people in the box who he can square the ball to. He's running at that penalty area and you can see that his sole intention is to try and get a shot in. You shouldn't really be thinking that when you've got the ball on the touchline and you're heading towards the edge of the box on the side. You should be thinking about who you can hit the ball with in the middle. And he, he ran into a crowd of players in the end and uh, it, we, luckily we got a corner. Um, 
when I say luckily, we could have had a goal if it had, if it had passed it, but we got we, he got a corner out of it. And uh, and the commentators said on the TV, you know, he should really be looking across the. Across, I don't always agree with what the commentators say, but on this occasion, they bang on. He should be looking to feed it across the box there and not be looking to shoot. Uh, and then, sometime later, uh, Dan James was uh, was given the ball just outside the D by Van der Beek. Dan James beat a man. Fed a beautiful ball through the inside right channel into the penalty area for Greenwood. Again, slightly too. He can score from these situations. I appreciate that, but it's not how you should be thinking when you're so wide. It's a much more difficult thing to come in field and beat men. And I know he's done it on the odd occasion, but the ball was given to him by Dan James and uh, both Cavani and Anthony Marshall were, a ho were hovering around the edge of the six-yard box. Green Greenwood should have fed it across. But he took a touch. Once he took a touch, he came inside. He's trying to open up the angle to get a shot in. When he when he come inside to open up the angle, he also had Dan James four yards off him. He could have just rolled it to Dan James. Dan James could have got a shot in easily, but he chose not to give it to James. In the first instance, he should have fed it across. He chose not to give it to Cavani or Marshall or try to hit Cavani or Marshall. And again... Players straight on top of him, his shot got smothered. So, so two poor decisions in the half hour that he was on, which were the exact things that I was trying to explain yesterday. Now, I was saying, also saying that Cavani will be waiting to feed off people who want to give the ball across that box. And if you if you've got this recorded and you want to have a look at it, or if you want to have a look at it, it'll be shown again on MUTV probably a couple of times today. You will see that um, on the one where James feeds feeds Greenwood in you will see that when he takes his shot on you'll see both Cavani and Anthony Marshall put their hands up as if to say you know what's going on why wasn't that ball fed across so it's, it'd be, I think it'd be pretty frustrating uh, for uh, for Cavani if that was to continue so if he's gonna if he's gonna be playing with Greenwood you know the coaching staff need to get older Mason and tell him that when he's playing wide he needs to he needs to start thinking about trying to get the ball across the box when he'll get chances is when the ball comes in from the other side and then Greenwood gets himself into the box hoping to get the chances that are coming from the other side and here, here again is a perfect example I actually said that a player like Dan James is a player who wants to get the ball across the box. So so Dan James received the ball probably only a couple of minutes before time, like Greenwood, he only got half an hour. But he received the ball, ran into the box with the ball, beat a man, got to the dead ball line, pulled it back, and the player just about coming back, just about got his toe to it. Otherwise, it was going to be on a plate for, for Mason Greenwood. Those are the sort of chances Mason needs to be getting on the end of. But when he's coming in from wide, he needs to be the player who's feeding the ball in and not be the player who's trying to get a shot in. So there's, there's, there's three uh, perfect examples in 30 minutes of, uh, of what I was trying to explain yesterday about Cavani. He's going to want to play with players who are looking to make chances rather than playing with players who are looking to create chances for themselves. Um, but overall, brilliant, brilliant win. 4-1, uh, over the moon with that. Top of the group, three points clear of the other two teams. Uh, after the game, um, uh, a couple of things that were said uh, which, which intrigued me. Paul Scholes, by the way, Exactly as I thought, he said, I won't get too carried away with that win. I'm not, even though I'm saying it was a great win, it was a great win. I'm well pleased with it. I'm not getting too carried away. They had plenty of play, plenty of chances. On another day, they might have scored a goal or two. Uh, it could have easily been a different game. There's no truer saying than goals change games. And once you're on top, you, you know, you've got the upper hand and they've got to come out more. But it, it, it worked great for us on the night. As Scholes, he said, don't get carried away. If he went with the exact same team against Southampton, I think we'll have a tougher game against Southampton this weekend. Let's see what he does. I think he'll change it again. Hopefully just one player or two again, though. He's got to try and get some consistency. Uh, Rio, Rio, Rio said in the studio um, that uh, Van, they were all eulogising about Van der Beek, saying how great he played. And Rio said he's the only... Only player in the squad who's happy playing one and two, who's completely happy. I think he said playing one and two touch football. I, I, I'd like to add that if if he's the only player in the squad who's who's happy playing one and two touch football, we need a lot more new players than I actually thought we did 
because we, that is the way to play the game is plenty of one foot one touch for football and two touch football I've just spoken about about the fourth goal for Dan James there was a first touch pass by Axel to Matic a first touch pass Matic to Cavani first touch Cavani to Van der Beek first touch Cavani to Greenwood there's four first touch passes there and that's the way to play the game it was absolutely beautiful goal and it was it was fantastic to watch um, Cavani was spoken about uh, absolutely brilliant as a number nine, great hold up play, work rate fantastic, numerous occasions coming deep into his own half when we were under a little bit of pressure and he's there to compete for the ball and, and try and get it under and relieve the pressure and uh, he, he did he did well in so many ways Cavani last night, I was very pleased with him. Uh, Ole after the game, Ole said Cavani, he, he was, it's the first time I can't remember the exact phraseology that he used, but he basically inferred that he's the first proper number nine we've had for a while. Um, I found that very interesting, obviously. I mean, I'm not saying he's as good as Cavani, but he's a lot younger than Cavani. Only obviously shipped, uh, shipped Lukaku out as soon as soon as he could, really. And he, yeah, that was the last time we had a proper number nine. Whether you like him or not, that's what he is. He is a proper number nine. And uh, Cavani's a proper number nine, so he's got rid of one and now signed another. Um, and Marshall, Marshall switched to the left, as I say, and I was also pleased to hear all he say um, how happy he was with Marshall's performance on the left. I was pleased to hear him say that. He also added he was he was happy how we played again on the left. Now he, he he switched to the left on Saturday for half an hour after after the substitutions were made. Um, obviously, in other games, he often drifts to the left, Marshall, but usually only for a minute or two, maybe three minutes. So, really, I think he's speaking about on Saturday, he was happy with him playing on the left and then happy with him playing on the left again last night. So, I've got a sneaky feeling that we're going to see plenty uh, in the upcoming games of uh, Cavani at number nine and, and Marshall wide on the left. So um, I like that. I think it looked good, and I'm, I'm glad Oli uh, spoke about both those players. He can't, he can't help but have been impressed by Van der Beek. By the way, uh, Van, de, Van der Beek, absolutely brilliant. How he's going to fit him in the team, I don't know. He might go with it against Southampton with 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 just the one defensive-minded player, which was Fred last night, uh, and Van der Beek. Going forward, I'd love to think it would work. I'd love to think we could score three and four goals every game. It isn't going to be quite as easy as that um, in the Premier League. So, I don't. if he goes for it, great. Let's see how it goes. But going forward, I don't think it would work on a regular basis. I think we'd concede too many goals uh, rather than outscore teams. Um, well, the result last night in our group went for us. Uh, PSG, uh, PSG won Leipzig nil. So we need one point now for me, the game, to qualify. Um, with three points in front of PSG, with three points in front of Leipzig. Uh, we've beaten them both. Uh, so if we draw with them, it goes on the head-to-head -head if you finish level. So even if they get to 10 points, uh, either of those teams, we still did need to win one and draw one. But that would do us because we... Uh, we'd be above them on the head-to-head. -head. So if we draw with Leipzig, we'll finish above them. If we draw with PSG... We'll finish above them, so um, so we just need the one point. So that's good. It's taking shape now. The the, the knockout stage is all ready. Although there's only four games been played in uh, in half of the groups, uh, Chelsea and Sevilla uh, both had good good two one away wins last night and and are already qualified from their group. Uh, Barcelona won four 0 in Kiev and Juventus beat uh, Ferenc Varos two one. Uh, so Barcelona and Juventus are through, along with Chelsea and Sevilla. So we can see what a tough knockout phase we ex we can expect uh, tonight. City, Liverpool and Bayern can all qualify if they win their games, and I expect them to win their games tonight. So added to PSG. Uh, sorry, not PSG, added to the teams that I've just mentioned that have already qualified. Chelsea, Sevilla, Barca, Juventus. Tonight, I think City, Liverpool and Bayern Munich will join them. Hopefully, we'll be joining them next week. We've got PSG next week. A point there would, would, see, us, would see us qualify. Uh, a fascinating group tonight. I'm going to be glued to Inter Milan versus Real Madrid uh, tonight, Group B. 
Um, in Group B, Borussia Mönchengladbach have got five points. Shakhtar have got four points. Real Madrid have got four points. And Inter Milan have only got two points. Sounds like they're well out of it, Inter Milan, but it isn't really the case. If they can beat Real tonight, there'll be a point in front of them. And then obviously Borussia and Mönchengladbach are playing Shakhtar, so they both can't get... Um, get three points obviously they could get one point each or one of them might get zero so Inter, Inter will be right amongst it if they can win tonight uh, if they win tonight of course they go to five points and Real Madrid will be on four points Real Madrid beat Inter Milan 3-2 in the Bernabeu so if Inter Milan can win 1-0 or 2-0 or 2-1 they've got two away goals so if they can just win by a low scoring game um, they'll have an, an extra bonus really because there'll be a point in front of Real Madrid and the group's so tight um, it wouldn't be a surprise if the head-to-head -head came into it in the end and uh, they would be ahead of Real Madrid on the head-to-head -head as well as being ahead of them by a point so it should be a fascinating night's football tonight I'm looking forward to that one I'm hoping Inter Milan can do it actually and make it really really, uh, really interesting um, later on today I'll be doing my player ratings and I'll be choosing one of the other major one of the major outlets and comparing my player ratings to their player ratings that'll be going up this evening uh, that show will be called rating the ratings I hope you I hope you've enjoyed that little show uh, if you enjoyed it please smash a like on the video please subscribe tell all your friends if you didn't enjoy it don't tell anyone keep stumped